Welcome. Um, we're going to continue our discussion of polynomials. Um, this is a problem that I have given um, to students is if they have to describe um, a polynomial. Okay, and they can represent the graph. Okay, so we have to describe the polynomial. By describing it, we have to indicate the degree. The degree. Oops. The degree. And we also wanted to identify the sign of the leading coefficient. The sign of the leading coefficient. Sign of leading coefficient. Okay. All right. So, given a graph, all right, that's what we're given. I wanted to describe um, the degree of this polynomial. So, given a graph like this, first example, we have number one. All right, example A. All right. If we're given a graph that looks something like that, all right, what do we see about this polynomial? Well, this is a smooth curve, so we know it's a polynomial, because all polynomials are continuous. So when you're looking at this, polynomials are continuous. That means they have a smooth curve. Continuous. Okay? So they have a smooth curve, no holes, no gaps, no vertical asymptotes. All right? That's it. And this does. Now, the next thing is, if you notice, we can look at the end behaviors. Now, end behaviors... Of a polynomial are what happened at the end. So notice how it goes up to the right and falls to the left. Because it's going up to the right and falls to the left, we know that it should be an odd degree. Okay, so maybe a cubic function or a um, a fifth degree polynomial or something like that. All right, but it's going to go up. Now, what also is intriguing about this is that we can see that it has one zero. Okay. Now we also see some additional loops. And what happens with these additional loops is that you kind of suggest that it's going to be more than just a, all right, a single linear, because it's definitely not a line. But it does go up, and then it comes back down, all right, and it goes back up again. I would guess, if I would have to say the degree of this polynomial, because it has two, um, a max and a min, this would definitely be a category where we have at least a third degree polynomial. All right, this is definitely at least a third degree. Okay. It has end behaviors, which are odd. It has these two loops, because when you have a x cubed, all right, it goes like this. But when you change it up and you write some other graphs, what happens is that these values start being lengthened out, and then start coming down and moving up. And this polynomial appears to be shifted all right, up a little bit, all right, which creates a problem like this. Okay? So this is definitely a third degree. It's leading coefficient, because the end behaviors are to the right going up and to the left falling down, has the characteristics of everything with a leading coefficient, which is going to be positive. Coefficient, which is positive. Okay? And those are the characteristics we have. Well, if you want to try another one, all right, we'll look at another one, another example. And let's say we have a graph that looks like so. Okay? If we have one that goes like this, and goes back down. All right, like that. And I'll draw this right here. Now let's look at this one. So example number B. Example B. All right. And looking at this, we can see all right the degree. Well, knowing what we know about polynomials, they have zeros. Now the previous one only had one zero, but just by looking at the shape, we can figure this out. But we can see this one has one zero here. It has a zero here and a zero here. Um, in my previous tutorials, I talked about graphs and the multiplicity of each zero. And it helped us tell the degree. So the degree of this polynomial I described yet, um, it appears that right here we have one zero, okay, the multiplicity of one. Okay? Here, because it's tangent, all right, tangent means it has a multiplicity of at least two. And I would say it probably just simply two. This one passes through, so we know it's at least a multiplicity of one because it passes through. Well, to figure out the degree, we know that the sum of the multiplicities, or the sum of the zeros, all right, the zeros, all right, which equal the multiplicities, all right, equals the degree. So, by counting up our multiplicities, 1 plus 2 plus 1, that gives us 4. So, I'm guessing this is a fourth degree polynomial. It has all the characteristics of a fourth degree polynomial. N behaviors. 
you look, remember, behaviors. Okay? For an even degree. All right? That has a positive leading coefficient. Right, so LC would have, to the right, it would rise, and to the left would also rise. So I'm guessing this would be a, all right, by looking at the end behaviors, okay, and knowing that it's a fourth degree, I would say that it is a positive leading coefficient. If it wasn't, this polynomial right here would be reflected and would be going down like that if it was a negative degree. But it is not. It is like this. All right, moving it up right there. And that's why we have right there that I'm guessing, or I'm not guessing, but I know, or we know, that this is a fourth degree with positive um, leading coefficients. All right. We'll do one more. One more. And this will be example C. All right. And what we have here, and let me draw this example. Um, we have one that goes like this, a little bit tougher one. Like that. All right. Very interesting, very interesting. Given this problem, we can see that, um, look at the zeros. There's a lot of different action going on here, but we have a zero here, a zero here, and a zero here. So looking at that, we have a multiplicity of 1, multiplicity of 1, and a multiplicity of 1, because in each one of these points, it passes through. So the degree of this polynomial, we know, is at least 3. Okay, because 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3. However, I'm guessing this degree is maybe a little bit larger than 3. And the reason why I think it's, and hopefully that you would know it's a little larger, is because you see these little swooshes. If I would bring this down, let's just say if this was brought down a little bit. Okay? And we wrote it like this. All right? And shifted it and did a vertical shift down. How many zeros would this have? Real zeros. Well, now we have one, which we have right here. Let me shift it over there. This one is now right there, and this one is now right here. But you can also see that we have a zero here and here. Well, notice that we have a zero here and here, all right, both a multiplicity of one. We have one, two, three, four, five, a five, a fifth degree polynomial. Knowing that this is shifted down, I would say this is larger than a third degree, and I would probably guess. If I were a betting man, that this was actually a fifth degree. In the original problem, it's a fifth degree. However, in this problem okay, that we originally had, is that we had two extra zeros that were complex or imaginary. They're imaginary, and that's why they were have this little loops and dives and max and mins way on top, because you have imaginary or complex zeros. We haven't talked about that, at least in my class yet. All right, but complex zeros create um, values that are either above or below the x-axis, um, or you do have max or mins, but um, are not real zeros that are graphed on a real um, coordinate plane. So with this, I'm saying it's a fifth degree. Now, fifth degree means it's odd. So the end behaviors of an odd degree polynomial, all right, if it's positive, if it has a positive leading coefficient, leading coefficient, should have where the right should go up and the left should fall down. And looking at this right here, um, we can see that it does, so this is a positive one. If it wasn't, we could rotate it like this and you would see a graph that would look something like that. All right? Um, where it would be in the opposite direction. Actually, no, it's not. It's not reflecting at all. <laughs> Oops. All right, but it is an odd degree and does have positive values. All right. Um, I would have to flip this, and I don't know if I can flip it using my smart board. Uh, no. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, left to right. There we go. It would be left to right, flipped over, all right, and reflected. And there we go. And that's what it would look like if you had the other way. All right. But I'll go back to this way, and this is what the original graph is, so it's positive leading coefficient. Okay. So, went through three different examples of how to identify the degree and co leading coefficient of various graphs when we're just given a graph. So, hope this helps you out on identifying and knowing more about polynomials. Um, good luck on the rest of your homework and or, or your studies in this area.